Hey guys, it's Abergonia and I'm back with a new, or not new, I guess new tutorial. <laughs> In the last tutorial, I said that I was going to start on advanced coding kind of thing. So to introduce advanced coding, I wanted to show you guys how to do choices, simple choices and choices that allow your characters to choose the outfit from kind of thing. So that's what we're going to do today and I hope you guys truly appreciate it because I wish I knew how to do choice coding before when I started out as a writer because I did not know anything. That's why you were mine. It doesn't have any choice options and that's why the sequel has more choice options because I got into um, choices and I familiarized myself with a choice coding and I hope you guys appreciate this so you guys can get um familiar with it as well so right now i just put a simple coding um just to start us off um so i'm going to show you guys simple choicing first and right now it's just her answering the phone and she's just saying hello and we're just gonna make um matt call her and ask her what do you want to do today kind of thing so We'll put narrator, parentheses, Matt. So that's the difference between narrator and nair. Nair is like just a simple speech box that has a no name on it. And um, you usually see that in a lot of stories. But if you put narrator and then a character's name in parentheses, it's um, the same thing, but then their name is on it. It's like they're the narrator kind of thing. Like, um, they don't have to be there. It's not a speech bubble, but it's like a narrator box kind of thing. Why am I explaining this in a choice option tutorial? I have no idea, but I hope that guy, that little um, feature helped you guys out as well. So I'll just put, um, hey, what do you feel like doing today? So before you put, um, before you start any choice coding, you need to have a dialogue beforehand because if you do um, choice coding b without a dialogue before, the line, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really bad at explaining right now, I'm getting a lot of brain farts, but you have to have a dialogue before you just start your choice coding or else if you try to save it, it's going to say you have an error and you have to have it's gonna say you have to have a dialogue so we're just gonna do this and then to start choice um, coding you just put the word choice and you can select on this drop down thing that they offer you and it shows you the format of how choice coding should look like so for our option one we'll just put um, go shopping and our second option would be um, getting lunch okay so um this is basically the choice bubbles that users click on and we're just gonna start coding so af under go shopping this is where you would put all your coding um of them going shopping going to the mall getting clothes and all that and under the lunch line you would put um your coding and direction of them going to a restaurant, getting food, blah blah blah, talking and everything. You would not want to delete this little bracket thing and I'll explain to you guys later. And we're just going to put simple coding. So Jen, if it's red that means you need to move a line up or move a line down or there's a space, you need a, there's a space that's not needed. Talk phone. And usually I put a lesson animation right after talking. Oops. And we'll just make Jen exit left. And then from there, they'll just um, be going to the mall, buying the clothes and stuff. But we're just going to make it short and simple. And under getting lunch, we'll just copy and paste.
just like that. So all your coding here is just going to be them going shopping, all their coding here is just going to be them getting lunch. And um, let's go to a house. Okay, we'll just choose this one. I'll we'll copy and paste the coding. Oops. Here. So basically, this little thing closes the choice coding. So after they're done shopping, they're going to go straight to Dad's house. After they're done getting lunch, they're going to go to Dad's house because this thing closes the choice coding thing. Yeah. So, um, this is just. Does this mean this just means everything after whatever they're done doing for the choices it's gonna go straight into this scene so yeah that's simple choicing and I hope you guys understood that if you guys didn't understand it please comment below and I'll try to make a clearer video just comment your concerns or questions and I'll try to answer it and if you guys want me to make a clear video then I will kind of thing and we're just going to move on to um, a more advanced kind of coding. And that will be about um, allowing users to choose character outfits. So we're just going to delete all of this. And like the other example, we need a dialogue. So we'll just make Jen think. What should I wear today? So again, we're going to choose choice. And um, over here, I'll put outfit one, outfit two. And if you want, you can, you know, describe what kind of outfits you want them to wear. And to make more choices, you just do the same format. Open bracket, close bracket kind of thing. Outfit three. Okay. So under outfit one, well, it depends on how you want your character to change. Usually I just make them dust off and then change into their outfit. Other authors prefer their characters to go off screen and then change into their outfit. But for the sake of this video, we'll just do um, dust off. Um, dust off. And for them to change into an outfit, you would put Jen changes into, and we'll just make her change into her default for the sake of this video. And usually you would put an animation because it gives time for the reader to see how the outfit would look like on the character. And then we'll just make Jen talk shrug. Do I, or we'll just make her admire it. Okay, and then we'll just copy and paste it for the others. But you would just choose or change the name of the outfit. So basically, it's sim um, simple coding or simple choice coding, just like that. But what makes it more advanced is that um, you need to add another type of coding to allow the readers to go back just in case they change their mind on an outfit choice. So to do that, over here, you would put label, oh, I spelled label wrong, outfit options, or you can label it anything you want to do. You can put outfits, you can just put outfits. I usually just put outfit options. If I put hairstyles, I put hairstyles options and whatnot. So again, this bracket just closes the op um, choice coding kind of thing. So we would need to open a new one. But because we're opening up a new choice coding, we need a dialogue. So we'll put, um, is this what I want to wear today? So then we're going to put choice again. 
And labeling in advanced choice coding is very um, helpful. It's very vital for a lot of authors because choice um, coding is can get kind of confusing and messy and labeling just helps out a lot. So we'll just put for option one, yes, I want to wear this or no. I want to see the outfits again. So if she says yes, I want to wear this, we'll put make Jen say perfect. I'm ready. But if she says no, I want to see the outfits again, you would want readers to go back to see the outfits. So in order for them to go back to see the outfits, you would put go to and then the label choice or sorry, the label outfit options. So this allows them to go back to choice this choice and see if or what kind of outfits they would want to wear again if they change their, end up changing their mind. And um for example if they choose outfit one and they wanted to choose outfit three they would click this and they would choose outfit three and then this would pop up again and if they wanted to choose outfit three they would press yes and then that would end the whole coding thing i was super reluctant to make this video because i want to show you guys how it looks like and how it plays out because me explaining it is not um I don't explain things well. I show things well, but I don't explain things well. But um, I guess you guys can um, code this into your scripts and test it out on your um, for yourself on the app. Because right now, I'm still trying to figure out how to record my screen on my iPhone. And if you guys do know how, please comment below to tell me how to do it for free. No, um... I try, I'm trying to look for free softwares right now, but um, just for the time being, I guess you guys can put it into your coding or in your script and alter it a little and um, just test it out. Usually it's trial and error because as a new writer, um, things, you would get a lot of errors. Things don't play out as well as you would hope because we're just all starting out and we all get better in time. I mean, I got better in time. I mean, I hope I got better in time. But, yeah. So, let's just save this. See if we have any errors. Oh, we have an error. Oh, see, it says... It says, unexpected choice. Did you include a choice without a line of dialogue before? So, you would have to put the label at, or before the choice. Or the label before the dialogue. And we're just going to save it. And chapter saved. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. If you're still confused, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please let me know. Tell me um, what you're confused on. And hopefully I explain it be better through typing or whatnot. And if you guys want me to make a clearer video, then I will. But yeah, this ends my choice scene coding kind of video tutorial. And I hope this helped you out. So bye guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.